What's good? You are now tuned in to Hoodriotic TV Live Hip Hop News, and today marks exactly seven years since Gilly Cousin Wallow was released from prison on February 18th, 2017. So today he had took the IG to just reflect back on the fears that he had when he was first released, the expectations that his family had for him, and the temptations that was going on around in his community. So, um, you know, I just wanted to give a shout out to Wallow. Keep pushing positivity. And, you know, everybody out there, just make sure you hit that like and subscribe for more. All right, let's get into it. Good morning. Good morning. Today, I've been out of prison seven years. Today is like my New Year's Day, you know, and it seemed like yesterday I could still remember on February 18th, 2017, I woke up in prison and I woke up at Cool Township Institution in like middle, middle Pennsylvania. And to be honest with y'all, I was scared. I was scared as shit. I was just so scared because I was like, oh my God, the day they let me go home. I'm talking about that was the scariest day of my time in prison. The day that they was like, it's time for you to go home because you got to sit back and think about all the phone calls, all the letters, all the visits where you told your family members or whoever that you a different person. Uh, I'm not that person no more. I'm this, I'm that. Now you got to show up. Now you got to deliver on the person that you said you are when you never in your life was that person. When you growing up in the streets, you just running around doing that. They never knew me to be the person that I told them I was going to be. They just know me to be a criminal running around in the streets and all that. So, you know, it was like, <clears throat> I remember like, just, just like being nervous, leaving my cell, going down to the ID room, the, the intake room to get my property, to get my, 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 my identification, my birth certificate, my, uh, Social Security, Social Security card, uh, the little the money I had on my books or whatever, and then your clothes be there that your people seeing that you wear. I'm trying to call, put my clothes on. I'm in a cage, and I can remember just signing the papers and I walking out the door, and it was just like, you know, it was just scary. My sister Teeth was there. T, shout out to T Team, T Murder. She was there coming to get me, and I and, and I walk. I take a picture in front of the sign just to remember this day. But I walk, I jump in the car, and I'm just like, I'm just looking. And she's like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. But I, at the same time, I'm scared to death because I never was this person that I claimed to be that I say I became. And then it's nothing to challenge me to see if I'm really that person no more. So a lot of times when people come out of prison, you be wondering why they just be trying to, it be a lot on their mind. And you got to be patient with them if you got a family member because you be scared to death. Because it's like, okay, I got to be this person now that I never was. Okay, let me figure out how I can be this person. And then what happened when the challenges come my way, the challenge if I am that person. Remember the homies come, they trying to put you onto the block, put you onto this, put you onto that. And you like, what do I do? You know, do I, is I'm gonna get a job? I never had a job a day in my life. Uh, how do you move? You just thinking about how to move. So I was just so scared and I was paranoid. I'm telling you, I was like, damn. But it was just, it was just something inside of me. It was something inside of me said, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta turn it up and I gotta be that. You know, and coming in the house that day, seeing my grandma, seeing my mom, seeing my nieces, my nephews, it was just like, man, this, you, what you gonna do? You know, it was that time. Um, and it was temptations during my journey. I remember I used to walk down Broad Street. If you from Philly, you know that. I walked from South Street to, from South Street or Broad Street all the way to uh, Broad and Allegheny. And uh, I used to see a lot of people, man. I used to see a lot of the homies, a lot of people I knew from prison that was doing stuff, a lot of people I knew before in prison that was doing stuff. And you know, it was always, I always had access to be, to go back to be a criminal, but it was like, nah, this shit over here is way better. I ain't gotta worry about all this other stuff. And it was like, it was scary, but the, but from where I came from that day, I walked out of prison to now, seven days later, is a blessing because no time in my life have I ever stayed out of a, out of a cell more than a year. I never made a year. I never made a year. So for me to be out here seven years, for me to be doing what I'm doing, it's a blessing. I want to thank everybody out there that, uh, that played a part in my in my journey. You know, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, whether you commented in my favor, you commented, you know, against me, or whether you hate it, whatever, it doesn't matter. All that stuff is, it add value to what you got going on and, you know, it helps you. But I just want to thank everybody that was a part of this journey in any way. I'm talking from the smallest to the big, man. Um, Cause I ain't gonna front, I was scared. I was scared as shit coming home out of prison. You know, cause when you just be losing so long, it's comfortable being a loser. So you cool when you in prison, cause you like, I know this environment, I can move around, I know this. But an environment you don't know, like the free world, like you don't know the free world. You don't know like uh, that free world, how you, you know, and, and just, 
it just be scary, man. I was like, oh shit. And I always, you know, I, w I was excited to come home. I wanted to come home. I always dreamed about coming home. And I used to write my stuff that I wanted to do in the book of life. Like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But it still was this unbelievable fear. Like, oh shit, I gotta do right. And uh, prison is just a place that can get you real comfortable with being there. You know, because it removes responsibility of being a man or being a woman where you gotta, you gotta take it, you know, you got three hots in a cot. You ain't paying no bills, you ain't gotta do nothing. So it, it, can, make a, it can make you, man, crazy, you know? I'm just thankful that I was blessed enough to come out to the free world. I wasn't entitled, I wasn't angry at the world. I did my crime, so I didn't have nobody to blame, ain't nobody snitch on me, it was none of that. I didn't have none of them stories that anybody have, the victim stories of, uh, you know what I mean? The victim, you know, the, the victimizer becoming a victim. I ain't had them stories, so I'm just thankful. But I just want to say, man, I think everybody that's been a part of this journey with me, man, and the day I've been, it's my, my new year. This is how my new year starts, for real, for real. Um, seven years free. I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for everybody that paid a part in this journey with me. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, there's more to come. And um, I just want to say this. If you're coming home from prison and you just came home, um, be patient. Um, don't rush nothing. Don't look at the illusions on social media and feel as though you're missing out or I gotta do this or everything that you know that happened when you was jailed, you never gonna get back. You never gonna catch up for them lost days, them lost moments, and none of that. But you can make a better future forward and you can uh, just focus. Um, but definitely don't be out here tripping and uh, don't be out here chasing this stuff that's really not real, man. Because I'm gonna tell you something. Ain't nothing better than, you know, going to your refrigerator or, or taking a walk off. It could be anything from just jumping on, you know. Uh, I got a, I got a thing, I love public transportation, so sometimes I jump on public transportation just because I, I used to dream about that when I was in jail. It might not be major to you, but it was like, damn, I want to be on the subway. I want to get on the bus. Uh, so it's a little things, but, and if you've never been to jail, don't go. And if you ain't a real nigga, don't be one. Uh, i never seen a real nigga win. And I'm saying that in a way of, you know, people use it in different ways, but a lot of times we, we define a real nigga as somebody that commit crimes in this community and tear down this community and victimize this community and, you know, have to prove themselves to do something against somebody in their community in order to get that title. I'm a real, you know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I know a lot of times the prison be glorified and doing a bit be glorified and, you know, just doing some, sh some dumb shit is glorified. Uh, we got to grow past that and realize that nothing is more powerful than just being physically free and nothing is more powerful than just living. You know, just being able to live, man. Being able to go where you want to go, do what you want to do, uh, be who you want to be. Nothing is more powerful than that. So you really got to be able to just, like, enjoy your life, man. Really enjoy your life and just be like, man, I'm blessed to be here, but I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm going all over the place, but I just want to say that, man. But uh, if you ain't never been a real nigga and you've never been to prison, don't go. Switch your lanes if you can. Uh, get out the game if you can. And uh, I wish you the best. Thank you for being here, man. Here number seven, my new year.